going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the DFS OGs Podcast Week 17. I'm Jack. Hope everybody out there had a great Christmas, New Year's, right around the corner. One of us is ready to celebrate early here with the 2023 background. Let me bring in my boys before we do that. Uh, sponsored show is Bet MGM. Use promo code Grinders. That'll get you a risk free bet up to $1,000. Take advantage of that while you can guys week 17 in the books week 17 is here we're going to cover each and every game as always from a betting perspective and take a look at some motivations got some interesting games on the dock and we're not facing the weather issues that we were last week so chop i'm going to start with you buddy 2023 on your mind we're a few days away from the new year so how was week 16 what is the new year's plan and how are we doing today Oh man, yeah. Week sixteen was in. It was just average, no, no big deal. So, uh, uh, looking forward to week seventeen. It's like the Saturday slates are done now, as far as regular season. The regular season's winding down. So, you know, these next two weeks are just kind of like you kick the tires a little bit. You wait for the playoffs, and that should be fun. But uh, NFL's winding down, man. New Year's, I'm. I'm I'm not a big New Year's guy. Like, I don't, you know, I I, lo- I like me some Christmas. I like me some Thanksgiving. New Year's doesn't really do it for me. I'm not, like, 25 anymore, so right. I don't really do all that stuff. But uh, it's just family. It's just family now. It's it's about some good food here at the house and uh, making sure my kids don't blow off their hands with the fireworks. That's the, <laughs> that's the two things you just got to, you know, make sure you take care of here. That's about it. Yeah, we don't need a JPP situation over there in the, the CHOP household. So similar here. I'm not a huge New Year's guy. When you're younger, of course, you went out, you tore it up, uh, you partied all night. Now it'd be a struggle to even make it till midnight. You know, the kids are all fired up and I'm ready for bed. So we'll have a good time just like you hanging out, good food and uh, football, uh, a plenty, college football, those big games this weekend as well. So exciting weekend of football. No, no. 2023 around the corner. How was Christmas? What's the New Year's plan? How are we doing today, buddy? Yeah, doing good. A little under the weather, but it uh, seems like everybody. But, yeah, I agree with you guys. Oh. So we would party, go out, and, uh, yeah, just nothing good would happen. Uh, just drama all the time on New Year's. So uh, now that we're getting older, you know, I'll be in bed. I'm sure my little man won't be able to make it until New Year's anyway. So it'll just be another night uh, in the Noto household. But, other than that, doing good. Um, and Chop, I listened to one of your showdown shows with uh, Tuttle. And like you were saying, just after Christmas, there's just kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of like a lull. Uh, just kind of a sad period. You know, there was so much fun after Thanksgiving and football's winding down and NBA's in the in the, the terrible part of the season where half the league is out. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's a decent time of year, but uh, definitely after Christmas, there's a little bit of sadness. All right, well, we're here to build that bankroll heading into 2023. Picks were pretty good last week, another winning week. So let's continue the roll here. As always, we will start with Thursday Night Football. If you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see scoresandodds.com on the screen. Uh, you got to use this tool. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and check it out. Tons of great information, all the odds at all the different books to find you the best price, premium picks that we all contribute to as well. So Go and check that out. Hit that thumbs up button. And if you're listening on a podcast feed, welcome in. Uh, make sure you go and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate that. All right, let's start. Thursday night football chops. Cowboys uh, in action here against the Titans. Now, a ton of line movement here in this one. Dallas opened up three-point favorites. That's gone all the way to 11 here at BetMGM. We'll be using their spreads and totals here throughout the show. 40 on the total here. So, Going to start with Chop. Now, motivation-wise, Tennessee Tennessee's basically playing for the division title next week against Jacksonville. So they, they can't get in the playoffs without winning the division. So this game doesn't really mean much for them. Dallas, we know, needs a Philadelphia loss uh, for a shot at the division title. So likely motivated here to continue winning. And it's big favorites. We obviously expect to win here from the Cowboys. But Chop, my question, did that number get too high? I mean, from 3 to 11 here. I know it's Malik Willis. I know Tennessee may end up resting people. Who knows? Maybe Derrick Henry doesn't play a full allotment of snaps. But thoughts on this big number here in your Cowboys on the road in Tennessee Thursday night football? The number did climb too high for me, but not high enough for me to take Tennessee here. 
but it's too high for me to take the the Cowboys because uh yeah, the Cowboys are in a similar boat. Like what are they playing? They're, they have nothing to play. They are the wild cards. Okay, I take that back. Philly could theoretically lose to get, but you know. So I got a feeling that you know that that'll come to an end here after this game and, and Dallas will really punt next week, next week's game and rest a lot of guys. I still think they'll kind of lay off the throttle a little bit in this game. They've got a lot of defensive injuries they're trying to work through. This is a big number. And uh, like the Titans, I can't back them. Oh my God, Malik Willis, not good at all. And yeah, they're not going to be playing for anything. And they're a smart organization. And there's a very good chance we don't see much Derrick Henry, maybe a, a one quarter of Derrick Henry or something like that. And so I'm kind of uh, at an impasse on this game. I, I don't like either side with this spread jumped up so high. Yeah, I'm kind of with you here. Uh, my lean would be the Titans, but I certainly don't want to put any USD on, on Malik Willis. I would also lean an underplay here uh, if I'm doing anything, but uh, just a lot of question marks for what these teams are going to do with no clear path uh, to anything. Neither of these teams have to play everybody uh, that full allotment of snaps. So, no, no, same boat here. Any stronger takes? Big spread here Thursday Night Football. Yeah, ugly game. Uh, I hate games that have no meaning, really. Um, they're going to be you know, much tougher to predict than the ones that do. Uh, you guys mentioned, I think the under is certainly in play here. Malik Willis, yet to throw for 100 yards in his three starts. I don't think we see much uh, of any, if Derek, of much if any, of Derrick Henry. I just think they're going to be gearing up to win next week's game against the Jags. So I would lean Cowboys. I would lean the under, but not a game that I want to bet on. All right, let's go to Sunday, and this one has all the motivation in the world. NFC South title on the line, Carolina, Tampa Bay, both teams with losing records. Uh, A lot of line movement here as well, guys. Opened up Tampa Bay as seven-and-a-half-point favorites, which is laughable. That thing was bet all the way down to minus three, where we sit now 40-and-a-half on the total here, Noto. So I'm going to lock in a best bet here to start. I like what I see out of the Carolina Panthers right now, guys, and I still have a lot of questions on Tampa Bay. I know they've been winning late in games that win against Arizona late, but right now I think Carolina's the better team, especially with the offensive line issues of the Tampa Bay Bucks. So I'm going to take the road team here plus the three points. Would not shock me to see them win. So don't hate a money line bet either. But no, no, locking in the Panthers, best bet number one. Agree, disagree. What are you doing here, Carolina, Tampa Bay? Yeah, I like that uh, pick quite a bit. I wish we were getting the three and a half. You know, if we would have bet earlier in the week, we would have got the hook. But, uh, yeah, like you said, I just haven't seen much of anything from the, the Buccaneers all season. Uh, I think they are 3-11-1 against the spread now. And uh, the under is hitting four, in 11 of their 15 games. So uh, it's going to be an ugly game. I do think it's going to come down to a field goal. So I will just blindly uh, take the underdog and take the three. Chop. NFC South on the line. These teams have been terrible this season. I'm on Carolina as a best bet. Noto tends to agree. You with us? Are you going with your boy Noodle Arm? Tough one. Tough one. I mean, I I guess I'm going to disagree, and I'm going to go with the Noodle Arm here, man. Just being at home, and, like, I don't trust them at all. They're bad. That's not a good offense. It's not a good team in general. But – I think they can offer a little bit more resistance in the run defense than uh, than what Carolina's seen the last couple of weeks. I got, I got we got to check on Vitave, make sure he plays. I think he's questionable still, but uh, yeah, I think you know as much as I want to discount Tom Brady, and I don't think they're a threat in the long run. Like if you leave the game semi close with about three or four minutes left. He's still going to do his thing and come back and score some weird touchdown. Like for some God reason, man, for God, God awful reason, teams don't know how to cover the flats against Tom Brady with two minutes left in the game. It seems like they're always letting him check down to these guys, and he's always driving the ball 70 yards in two minutes to score a game-winning touchdown when all you really have to do is defend Leonard Fournette coming out of the backfield on the pass. But he keeps getting it done, so I think three is is a, a low enough number that I, I can probably take – lean Tampa here, but it wouldn't surprise me if Carolina comes in here and pulls the upset. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that one, but I, I'd take, if I had to put my money down, I'd put it on Tampa. All right, let's move on. Cleveland, Washington up next. Uh, not a lot of line movement here. In fact, stayed pretty steady. Washington, one and a half point favorites at open. That's gone to two, uh, another lowish total at 40 and a half. The news, Carson Wentz uh, back in as starting quarterback here. 
uh, for Washington. Now, Cleveland, we know, is eliminated. Washington still has a lot to play for. They control their own destiny here. Got to win this week. Got to beat Dallas uh, next week. So uh, plenty to play for here for Washington. I'm going to go ahead and lock in Washington uh, as best bet number two. Cleveland really let us down last week. I mean, a home spot against a, a terrible New Orleans team. Uh, they lose that game. Deshaun Watson has looked absolutely horrific. So I just think Washington with the motivation here. Wentz can't be much worse than what Heineke's been over the last couple of weeks. I really think they're going to be able to establish the run uh, with Robinson this week. So I'm locking in Washington here, Chop. Best bet number two. Agree. You're going back to Cleveland. What do you got here? Cleveland, Washington. I would I'd, I'd lean Washington, but I'm, I'm not going to lock them in just because of that quarterback switch. I, I think that, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, Heineke hasn't been good, but gosh, Carson Wentz hasn't been good literally since his rookie year. So uh, as much as I want to say, well, he was on the bench and maybe he'll learn something and he'll learn that you got to feed McLaren or you got to do this. Like he hasn't learned his whole career about this stuff. So I don't think he's going to change now. For that reason, I can't lock him in, but I'm with you. They got so much to play for and the Browns don't have very much at all to play for. So I would lean Washington. Makes me a little nervous that the number is under three. Uh, no, no, that that's one thing that, you know, it, it feels like almost too easy, I want to say here, with one fully motivated team and one team that, that's eliminated. But, you know, and I hope it's not recency bias from Cleveland burning us last week. But I'm on Washington. Chop tends to agree. Where are you at, Cleveland, Washington? Yeah, log me into Washington as well. I do not trust uh, Carson Wentz at all, but – I think this team, this team's going to be able to have some success on the ground. They're playing at home. They got the motivation. And like you mentioned, Cleveland's just been bad. I know last week it was a lot due to the weather. But uh, if they get down in this one, uh, I don't see Deshaun Watson you know, being able to pull off a comeback. So give me Washington as my first best bet. All righty, moving on. New Orleans and Philadelphia up next. Five and a half was the open. That's gone to six and a half in favor of Philly. 44 here on the total uh, we know the Eagles trying to lock in uh, the division. The one seed got to win one of their last two to do that. We're still wondering on the status of Jalen Hurts. One report, they're optimistic that he might play. The next report says he may be out until the playoffs. So uh, a lot of questions there. Gardner Minshew, though, looked good. Uh, that was one hell of a game uh, with the Cowboys and the Saints. Saints got to win out. They, they can still make it somehow, some way in that NFC South, but uh, they're going to need a lot of help as well. So, uh, no, no, Minshew hurts. We don't know that yet, but we know the Eagles, the much better team here under a field goal is that, or under a touchdown, I should say. Is that enough to lock in Philly? You go with the underdog here. What do you got in New Orleans, Philadelphia? Yeah, so the Saints uh, have yet to be eliminated. They still have a very small chance. I think they need Carolina to beat Tampa and then both to lose next week. And, Maybe something else to happen, too. I'm not sure, but uh, they have yet to be eliminated. Uh, I like that they used Taysom Hill a lot more last week. I think it was probably more weather-related than anything. But uh, maybe, you know, they continue it this week with more, you know, Taysom a quarterback. I'm going to just take the points um, and think that, you know, the, the Eagles kind of looking forward to the playoffs. Uh, I don't think Hurts is going to play. So I'll take the points. I don't feel great about it. But, yeah, I think New Orleans is just scrappy enough to cover. I'm – Basically in the same boat as you. I'm leaving this one alone. Uh, I would probably lean the Saints, but th this is just a pass for me. I'm, I'm likely not betting this game. Just too many questions here with, with motivations. What New Orleans team do we get here? So stay away from me. Chop, what do you got here, Saints, Eagles? It's a big game. This is a big, a big, big game here in terms of uh, the Eagles own that Saints first-round draft pick, if I'm not mistaken. So it would behoove them to come in and make sure they beat the Saints here and make that as high of a pick as they can get it. So uh, I think it's interesting. That's an interesting dynamic here. But, yeah, the Saints are just – they've lost everybody from the receiving core. Right? Like Landry's on IR. Michael Thomas hasn't played in forever. They don't have anybody to throw the ball to if Olave doesn't come back this week. The quarterback's not playing well. It's just not, it's just not a good team at all. So I think – I'm not like I'm not going to be the guy that says that Minshew looked good enough that we can we can start claiming Hurts as a system quarterback. I don't want to say that, but Minshew looked pretty dang good, man. So I think they still need that one win to secure everything for Philly, and I think they don't want to they don't want to press you know their luck and have to have that happen in Week 18. So I think they're going to roll this game. So I'd I'd lock in the Eagles here. Best bet, lock in. Yeah, let's lock it in. Best bet. Right. Got to use them somehow. 
I mean, if they do decide to rest Hurts again, they get the win, then they can rest him again next week. I think they I mean, will rest Hurts. I, I think do they as will. Well. Just makes but, uh, too much you know, sense. That Minshew looked pretty darn good, man. I, I got to give him credit. The stash back in our lives. So, uh, Chop locking in the Eagles, best bet number one. All right, we go from that to two teams that have been eliminated here, Arizona and Atlanta. Uh, opened at three, three and a half here at BetMGM. There are still some threes out there. Total on this one at 42. I'm going to lock in my third best bet. Falcons been good to me. I'm going to continue to go back to that well. If you look at these two teams, I just think they're the better team. And they're, both of these teams are bad. But give me the home team here. Ritter, not looking great, but I think they're going to get the run going. Tyler Algier has looked solid here. So uh, give me the Falcons. Uh, best bet number three. Chop, let's go to you here. No motivation here besides uh, draft picks. Arizona, Atlanta. What do you got? Lock me in with Atlanta. I think uh, this may be, you know, Arizona may be tanking this season away. J.J. Watt announces retirement. I don't know how much motivation he's got. I mean, well, he's he's JJ Watt, so he's going to be motivated regardless. But like, it's kind of all come. It, it's all anticlimactic for them now. I, I just and Ritter. This will be his third game starting, so he's got a little bit underneath his belt now. And I'm just really impressed with the way the Falcons can run the ball. They can just run the ball, man. When you give them any kind of opportunity, they they'll take they'll they'll stretch it. So I'm gonna lock in the Falcons too. All right, two for two. Noto, you joining us or are you a little bit more pessimistic here on our Falcons? Uh, it's hard to use a best bet on a team that has nothing to play for, but I agree with you guys. I do like the Falcon side of this one. The Cardinals bottom six run defense this season, and we know Atlanta, all they want to do is run the ball. And speaking of J.J. Watt, I mean, did you see him just constantly in the backfield against the Bucks? I mean, that yeah. was super impressive. Um, he was getting double teamed and splitting them and still, you know, making tackles for loss, so – uh, it's fun to see him play so well, and, uh, you know, maybe he goes out on a high note with the win or two. But, yeah, I lean the Falcons as well. All right, let's move to Derek's Jacksonville Jaguars uh, in Houston for this one. Spread on this game, sitting at four and a half. Uh, that has come down from the open of five and a half, total of 43 and a half on this one. So, Derek, there's a, a glimmer of hope for your Jags. You know, they're, they're going to obviously have a showdown next week. So uh, this one doesn't mean a ton for Houston. The number one pick is at stake. So are they going after it? Are they tanking to try to secure that number one pick and likely drafting a quarterback? So is this an easy one for your Jags? Uh, do you worry about Houston being competitive as they've shown uh, over the last few weeks here? What are you doing here? Your Jacksonville Jags down in Houston. Yeah, I'd usually take the points with the home team in this one. But uh, you mentioned two reasons. Number one, uh, Houston, they don't really want to win right now. They don't want to lose the number one pick. And then the Jaguars, even if they lose next week, if they win this game, they still have an outside shot to make the playoffs as a wild card team, which isn't the case for the Titans. So um, they're going to sell out to win this game, maybe not as much as they will next week. But I still think they want to take care of business just in case they can sneak into the wild card. So I will take the Jags um, uh, on the road and I'll lock that in. Locking in Jacksonville, best bet number two for Noto. I'm not locking it in, but I'm with you on the Jacksonville side here. Just Houston has too much to lose. Uh, they can't afford to not have that number one pick, uh, in my opinion. So uh, give me Jacksonville here as well. Chop, what do you got here, Jags, Texans? I'm not going to lock anything in on this game, but I, I'm, I'm going to lean with the home underdog here because uh, as much as – you know, you, you said Jacksonville still has a shot at the wild card, even if they don't win. It's like a 6% chance. They know that that's probably not happening. But they'll, they'll go through the motions and they'll act like they want to win this game. And they kind of like deep down inside, though, it's all about next week. Everything is about next week's showdown. So uh, with that being said, the Texans, I know they want to, they want that number one pick. But, man, that hasn't stopped them these last three weeks from competing and beating teams that were are really good. I think they're in the, playing the best ball that they've played all year long. They're playing like stress-free ball, and I think they go out there and they, if they don't win this game, they at least hang within that that point spread here against Jay. So I would lean Houston here. All right, Houston for chop. Bears, Lions uh, up next for us here in the NFC North. Uh, Lions six-point favorites. That's come down from the six and a half at open. Big total here, chop at fifty-two. We know the Lions. Stubbed their toe last week uh, in Carolina. Disappointing loss there, but still alive. Yeah, they got a win here. 
they need some help. They're in Lambeau next week. So uh, I don't say they control their own destiny, but they definitely need to win uh, both of these remaining two games here. Chicago is out of it, but division rivals, you know, they're going to they're gonna bring it. They're going to look to spoil their season here. Six is the number, Chop. What are you doing here, Lions, Bears? Um, I'm going Lions here, just a lean. Yeah, it's only because uh, Dan Campbell, I don't think, will allow a team to get so depressed that it doesn't come out and play football real hard, even though I know they're they're not feeling good about blowing the opportunity last week to climb back. Like they would, they were the favorites to make one of those wild card spots in the playoffs if they win last week, and I think it was a tough loss. But I don't think he will, like, just his demeanor doesn't allow a team to like get too low. So I'm going to take the Lions uh, at home here, and um, I just think they're they're just a solid. They're on the. Have you seen their draft picks in the first round this year? Like they're oh, yeah. going to they're going to restock. Jamison Williams is going to be 100 percent healthy by training camp. This is a team that's going to make noise next year. So I don't think they're just going to, you know, kick the rocks on these next two games. They'll go out there and they'll still try to win and they'll still be competitive. So I, I'd lean Lions here. I agree with the Lions. I, it feels like the total a little bit too high as well. I, I know Detroit puts points on the board. I know the Bears not a very good defense. Uh, it just feels like a really big number. So my leans are Detroit and the under. I'm not locking anything in here. I feel stronger about the under, to be honest. So Noto. What do you got here? Bears, Lions, Lions desperately need to win here at home. Yeah, to me, this feels like a Lions win and a Bears cover. Um, the kind of classic, uh, you know, Lions win by a field goal. I was looking through their game log. They've been very good as an underdog covering the spread, and they've been terrible as a favorite um, covering the spread, including last week against the Panthers. And don't don't count out the Lions just yet. They win their last two games. It's like a 70% chance of them to make the playoffs. So, uh, I think uh, we could see him, uh, you know, here in a couple of weeks. But uh, I'll I'll lean towards the Bears just because I think the spread's a little too big. Kind of rooting for the Lions. I mean, it, it's been a, a long history of, of losing, and to, the draft is your highlight of, of the season. So, plus, I mean, they, they've shown they can compete with anybody. And those are the kind of teams you want to see in the playoffs. I doubt there's many teams uh, would be excited to play the Lions uh, right now with the way that offense uh, can be clicking. So. Uh, we're, we're pulling for him here against the Chicago Bears. Next up, Miami and New England. We have a three-point spread here uh, in favor of New England. That's up from uh, – actually, it flipped. It was Miami minus two and a half. So the Tua News uh, has this thing on the news. He will not – has this thing on the move. He will not play this week. Another concussion for Tua. I mean, it, it, this is getting ridiculous with Tua. But And I don't, I'm sure you guys watched that game. Before concussion, almost 300 yards. After, some of the throws that he made were just egregious. I mean, throwing it right to the Green Bay defenders. So, a big win for my Packers, but to obviously the health of Tua, long-term, uh, a serious question here. So, Noto, we'll stay with you. Small spread here. Teddy Bridgewater, the new quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. Can he get it done on the road here in Foxborough? Yeah, I mean, really, really sad for Tua. I mean, a guy that's, uh, you know, had a breakout year and somebody needs to be held accountable. I mean, that's two different games that he's been held or, you know, been able to play longer than he should have uh, with those concussions. So uh, it's a sad situation. And I, I think the the Dolphins are just done for. I don't think they have any fight left in them. Uh, even with, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, I think he's a capable backup. But going into Foxborough, tough place to play. Patriots have really good pass defense. Uh, I will lock in the Patriots as my third best bet. I am joining you. I'm locking in New England here as well. They have to win this game or they are eliminated. Uh, they do control their own destiny if they win this week and they also beat Buffalo next week. Uh, as far as the Dolphins go, they're in. If they win their last two, if they split them, uh, there's about a 50-50 chance uh, for them getting in the playoffs. So both these teams are still very much alive. But Chop, I worry about the downgrade uh, from Tua to Teddy Bridgewater. I know New England's been up and down, but uh, I'm, I'm with Noto. Uh, I'm locking in New England minus the three here at home. You with us? You going on the other side? What do you got here, Miami, New England? No, I, I'm with you. Um, and I think I think I'm going to lock them in too. I think I think I'm, I know I'm with you. I think I'm going to lock them in too. I think there's just too big of a downgrade from Tua to his backup, and uh, and the Patriots. I give them credit, seven and eight. But man, I thought they were a lot worse than this at the beginning of the year. So. 
Um, you know who has really stepped up for New England and has kind of changed some of the things? He's actually may have won a game or two for him single-handedly on defense and special teams. My guy, Marcus Jones from the University of Houston, the rookie. He's a big-time playmaker, and, he, and he's making plays. And so, yeah, being at home, Bridgewater – I need Derek to look up the, the numbers for me, Bridgewater, in like environments like New England this week, where it's going to be a little bit wet and you know a little bit chilly. Uh, he's got the gloves on. He's worried man. about that. <laughs> he, was, he was a dome guy in Minnesota for a while. I don't know, but like he, he I don't know what the wind's going to look like, but his arm is a little bit, you know, it's not all that strong. So I just lean towards the Patriots for for what a lot of what you guys have already said. Patriots pass defense pretty good. What is the Dolphins? You know, it's just the timing is just so far off went from Tua to to Teddy Bridgewater with those receivers, and this offense is all about timing. So, I I, I go with the I'm a lock in the Patriots. All right, New England across the board here as a best bet this week against Miami Broncos Chiefs up next. Open Kansas City minus ten. That's gone to twelve and a half here at BetMGM uh, forty five on the total. Denver we know is eliminated. I do not own a first round pick for the next. 30 years, I think, because of this horrific Russell Wilson trade. Uh, the Chiefs got to win and hope Buffalo drops one, uh, trying to get that number one seed uh, in the AFC. So they will be going all out here against their divisional rival, Chop. So big number here. I, I know you tend to avoid these big spreads, but uh, Denver just got the brakes beaten off them by the L.A. Rams. What's going to happen here in Kansas City? Yeah, uh, I'm not going to lo- lock anything in. I would probably actually lean towards Denver in this game, just a slight lean, just because it's a big number. Casey, they see what's on the horizon. This is a really easy win for them. I don't think they push the gas pedal. And then they're looking ahead next week, Las Vegas with Jared Stidham at quarterback. Like, come on, man. They know that they got 2-0 in the bag. This is not a gas pedal game for them. Meanwhile, Denver, I'll be, I'm going to be looking and seeing um, – what they do with Russell Wilson this week in terms of they fired their coach. So does that change things up on their offensive philosophy? Do they get him in a more advantageous position to where he can do some things? And if they do, then I think Denver can hang within the spread. So I'm going to lean with, I'm going to lean with Denver here. I have the same thoughts uh, The Kansas city probably gets out to a big lead. Uh, I don't know that we see backups. I'm sure you may at some point if the league gets big enough, but then you start worrying about that that backdoor cover. So mostly a stay away from me here, but I would be with you. I don't want to bet on Denver, but if we got to make a pick here. I'm probably um, taking the points. You're taking you're taking the points that you know what they call that. I have a, I know a guy. He calls it the backdoor Betty. He calls it backdoor <laughs> Betty. I don't mean I don't know what that means, which is backdoor Betty. <laughs> is this Zaz? No, this is okay. it's the same group chat. So you get you get the okay. point of that chat. <laughs> No, no, Broncos, Chiefs, are you uh, back to our betty in this bad boy with us? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the first time these two teams met, uh, the Broncos did pull off the backdoor betty. I think the Chiefs got off to like a three-touchdown lead, and then it's a game where uh, Wilson ended up getting that concussion. But uh, the firing of the coach can only help the Broncos. But, um, yeah, I mean, the Chiefs got to win. So I would lean towards Kansas City. My favorite play in this game is going to be the under. I just don't think, you know, Denver has much left in the tank. And, you know, I uh, really enjoyed my Christmas day, but I did not enjoy watching, you know, Mayfield, Higby, and Cam Akers break the slate. I mean, that was just terrible. I didn't have exposure to any of them. You're not alone. I mean, I, I mean uh, you would probably could have got hell of odds at, at betting L.A. to score 50 points uh, in that game. So I, I'm with you. It was a rough, uh, rough Christmas day, uh, DFS-wise, thanks to the Rams. So let's move on. Next game, Colts, Giants opened up Giants minus three. That has gone to six here at BetMGM, 38 and a half on the total. Giants got to win one of their last two to make the playoffs. Colts uh, more looking for positioning, try to solve uh, this nasty quarterback situation that they're going through. Nick Foles looked absolutely terrible out there. I don't know how this guy won a Super Bowl, but here we are now on the road facing a a defense I think is going to cause some of the same problems. Uh, that the Chargers did last week. So love the Giants D this week. Noto, I like the Giants. I'm not locking them in here. What do you got, Colts and Giants? Oh, man, picking the Giants to win uh, any game, let alone by, you know, six points know. feels like uh, feels like a lot. But That's why it's not a best bet. I absolutely agree with you. But Nick Foles, man, 
he was like hovering to get sacked when there were guys not even around him last week. Like he was just ready to go down. Didn't want to, you know, try to stay up, make a play. He looked terrible. I don't really trust these running backs that much. I mean, Zach Moss has looked okay, but there's a reason why, you know, he was cut earlier this year. So I, I would lean towards the giants like you, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's screams of a field goal game to me. All right, Chop, any stronger thoughts here? Giants need a win to lock up a playoff spot. Colts uh, playing for that franchise quarterback next season. Yeah, I, I have a stronger lean towards the Giants, even though I'm not going to lock them in as a best better. I do have a stronger lean, though. They, uh, you know, they're obviously very motivated. And you can see on Saquon's face how bad he wants to get into the playoffs every game. Like he wants, he wants that, he wants it bad. So, you got that going for him on defense. They've got maybe, I don't know, it's debatable, but maybe the best pair of interior defensive linemen in the league. And now Thibodeau looking healthy coming off the edge. And you we're down to Nick Foles. Technically, he's like a third string quarterback here. And I don't know, like Foles had a couple of magical runs. As I said it on Monday, on Monday night. I was I was I did the, the showdown show. And uh you know, outside of that Super Bowl run, that like four or five game stretch for Foles with Philly and that one seven touchdown game back about six, seven, eight, nine years ago, whatever. That's that right. Was. I forgot about that. Chops big yeah. week. Yeah, that was the big week. It was a big week right there. Like, but other than those two things, he hasn't been particularly good in the NFL. And uh, now he's just kind of, I didn't even know he was still in the NFL until they announced him the starter last week. So. He's not that good. This team isn't that good. The Giants will get after him with that defensive line. I have a strong lean towards the Giants. Jeff Saturday have any shot at being the coach of this team next season? He he should not have a shot. I don't I, know. I, but if I you agree, but if you've ever if you've ever seen an interview with Jim Irsay, though, who knows, man? Like that guy's off his rocker too. Just looks like a deer in headlights. That, that's what comes to mind. When he just looks lost and some of the play calls and things like that. No, does this guy have any shot? I, I know Ursay likes him and, and they want to be bold. And I don't know how you roll in the next season with this guy as your head coach. I can't imagine so. I mean, that certainly wasn't the plan when you brought him on board. At least I wouldn't think so. So I don't think so. But, I mean, the guy just gave up the, you know, the biggest come from behind loss in NFL history. I don't think you can keep him. Jets, Seahawks up next. Both of these teams uh, were looking good earlier in the season. They now both sit at seven and eight. Both teams need to win out and get some help uh, for any shot at the playoffs. So uh, fully motivated here on both sides. Uh, Latest spread is the Jets favored at one and a half. That's flipped from Seattle opening as one and a half point favorites. 42 and a half uh, on the total here, Noto. So there's been a kind of a downslide here for both these teams. Now, a glimmer of hope for the Jets. Mike White back in at quarterback. I think the Zach Wilson days are done here in New York. So expecting an ugly game here. The total certainly indicates that. Which one of these teams keeps their bleak playoff hopes alive? Yeah, speaking of guys that uh, you know might not be back next year, is Zach Wilson ever going to play, uh, start another game in the NFL? I, not with the Jets. You, you may get a situation like Sam Darnold where somebody wants to take a shot on him, but I would say he's got to be done. I mean, to be fair, he was facing the Jags last week. Not much you can do against that uh, you know, elite <laughs> defense. Um, but no, kidding aside, Mike White's a huge upgrade. Um, so I will take the Jets. I think their defense is better. I think it's the best unit in this game. And do we know if Lockett's going to play? I believe he's done for the year. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's a big blow. Uh, to the Seahawks offense and uh, even more reason for me to like the Jets. I lean the Jets here as well. Uh, The line movement uh, is certainly interesting. Them being a road favorite here, uh, also interesting. So I wish could have got it on the other side, but one and a half either way, no big deal. I lean the Jets here as well. Chop, what do you got here? Jets, Seahawks. Um. This is a really weird, weird line for me to see to see Seattle at home, which is a tough place to play. They've been a decent team this year to be underdogs. I don't know what it screams, but it screams something. I'm, I'm going to take the Jets here. I'm not going to lock them in because it just feels weird. But like you guys said, Mike White, huge, huge upgrade uh, in on this offense. And uh, basically, if the Jets – well, this is, a, this is not an easy win. But if they can win out, which is – 
you know, they'll get the Miami game next week. They're going to get into the playoffs because Buffalo's not going to lose that last game at home with home field advantage on the line. And then that would be the Patriots in Buffalo. That's what the Jets need is a Buffalo win. Right? Like basically the Jets can, they almost basically control their own destiny is what I'm saying. They got to win this week. This is the big one. This is the tough one. I think they get it done. So uh, I'm on, like you said, Mike White, both of you guys said Mike White, huge upgrade here. I don't know. It's tough, but I think I think they get it done. I think they I think they win this game. We're getting zero help with, with the betting splits either. <laughs> the betting is even. The money is even. Like th- this thing is like a true uh, coin toss here. So uh, likely a stay away from me. Just too many questions uh, with this one. So sounds like we all lean the Jets. Uh, no best bets on this one. Next game, you mentioned Jared Stidham chop uh, he is back in our lives the new starting quarterback here for the las vegas raiders who are still alive they're, they're not eliminated i believe it's like a seven percent chance uh, to make the playoffs if they win out now the niners on the other hand very small shot uh, at moving up to that number one spot i mean they'd need a lot to happen here likely a two or three seed so you know still a little bit something to play for here but this is just a, a, a classic mismatch here chop this niners defense against Jared Stidham. I'm not locking in the best bet. I lean the Niners here, but the, can this kid spark something with this Raiders offense? Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, tough job here against this elite Niners defense. No, no, he's not sparking. Well, he might spark something up in the locker room, but he's not sparking anything on the field, man. But 10's a big number for a road team. But I would, if I was going to place a wager on this thing, it would definitely be the Niners. I'm not going to lock them in because it's a big number. But the Niners are still very much outside chance, but they still a chance that they could sneak into that number one seed in first round by if they finish off the last two games, win them, and Philly loses out. You know, you never know. The point being they'll go into this game and they'll still have motivation. That might change next week, and they may, they may you know, Take some time off next week, give some guys the day off. But for this week, they'll still go full out. So I would, if I was going to bet, it'd be the Niners. But uh, it's a big number, so it won't it won't be a lock for me. That I mean, worry about the backdoor betting here as well. I mean, San Francisco gets a big lead, and now we suddenly don't see McCaffrey, and we don't see Kittle, and IU comes off, and maybe some of the defensive players uh, take some snaps off, and. Old, old Jared Stidham uh, sparks that, that late comeback and throws a touchdown. So I agree with you. I, I, Niners w- would be the way I go, but that has ballooned to 10. We didn't give the numbers there. 10 on the spread, 41 and a half uh, on the total. So Niners, uh, the lean here as well. Nota, what do you got here? Big spread, San Francisco and Las Vegas. I'm going to lean towards Las Vegas just because sometimes, uh, you know, when a quarterback gets ruled out, the uh, the market tends to overreact. The line gets inflated, like you mentioned. It's all the way up to 10. You know, Jared Stidham, I don't know much about him, but uh, he's got a lot to play for. He's going to want to have some good film, um, you know, moving forward. And then Josh Jacobs still playing for a contract. So I think there's at least some reasons for, you know, the Raiders to to try in this one. And I'll blindly take those uh, 10 points. And uh, if they do trade Derek Carr in the offseason, where are you guys hoping he goes? Oh, that's an easy one, buddy. Just – Go to the Colts. Let's just do that, it, man. That was my first. <laughs> Let's just go true. for it, dude. That, that they'd be the laughing stock. It'd be funny. They yeah. might as well continue the trend. I mean, yeah. Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan. Let's let's try to reclimate uh, Derek Carr here. I, I could certainly see that happening. So I'd like uh, the Jets. No, that's Mike White's job. What, what <laughs> are you talking about? Would okay. So with that being said, would would you trade? Would you trade uh, Zach Wilson for like a Derek Carr and maybe just uh, some minor, you know, draft compensation? I mean, yeah. I mean, I I think Davis is the kind of owner that would feel like, yeah, hey, we can get Zach Wilson, bring him <laughs> yeah. out back out west. Like we're gonna turn everything around here. So that, that that's you know, I I, I used to think you know you watch guys like Baker Mayfield and stuff, and I thought. They just need the right system, man. They just need the right place. Like Cleveland wasn't the place, and Hugh, Hugh, uh, whatever Hugh, I forget the name of the coach he started off with when he was a rookie. Hugh Jackson, I believe. Yeah, Hugh Jack. That's not the right system. Like it's not. Some guys are just destined to fail because of where they were drafted. But I'm starting to grow into the notion that 
some of these guys are just really not good. And Zach Wilson just may really be putrid because he just looks like he has no clue out there. I don't know if he'll ever get it together. So, man, I wonder what you – if I'm the Jets, I'm just shopping the heck out of him. Man. What can next, I possibly next get? Next round pick. Oh, wow. no way. Just a sick – oh, my God. What You tell me who's going to give I any mean, more than I that. don't know. Yeah. There's got to be a goofball GM that says, oh, man, the f- number two pick two years ago. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a, a late first rounder for him. You know, who knows? I mean, I, I'm definitely shopping him, though, to see what I can get at him because that guy's – he'll never be a adequate level starter in the NFL. I've seen enough. Hey, great at banging his buddy's mom's terrible at playing football. I mean, that, that about sums up his career. I got one more trade here. And again, oh. salary cap, this, this probably isn't even possible because this guy makes so much money. But Russell Wilson oh. or Derek Carr. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you right now. I'll, I'll say this about the Russell Wilson situation. I just I find it hard to believe that Russell Wilson is totally washed. I I think that Have you watch this guy, Chap. He looks bad. Again, we're talking about coaching. This guy was a two Super Bowl winner and and could have been more. And when they let him cook at times in Seattle, he was great. They, I just think that you got to get a coach in there that's going to build the thing around him and his strengths. And I think that was, and we saw it in Week One with Denver. That was an all time colossal terrible head coaching hire from the very beginning. So I think maybe all that, a lot of that trickles down into the offense and Russell Wilson, like this guy, what well, this guy went for a, like a 69 yard field goal on opening day to tr- something crazy like that. Remember, I forget, but he was an all time bad coach and, we, and it only took us about 11 games to figure that out. So I still think if Russell gets coaching and you build the thing around him, I still think there's something there because every year up until now, I think he's been a good quarterback up until now. Now was the, so for some reason the cutoff point. Now, Derek Carr, he's had one good year, I think, his whole career. You know, there's a lot of, like, I still think Russell has something in him, man. I know, I just think this year was, I'm going to chalk almost all of it up to the coaching in Denver is what I'm going to do. I mean, that's fair, but the dude definitely looks washed. Now, we, we've, we've said this about yeah. guys before, and they've proved us wrong, but I, I got, you know. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll, There's also we'll, the thing that he's also like Russell is so unauthentic and ungenuine with all of his social media stuff. And so and maybe that, that's part uh, of the problem. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe, the maybe that all just got to his head so much over the years that he is washed because of that now. And he could care less about it. So who knows, man? I might be wrong here. Your teammates don't like you. I are not going to find much motivation, especially your linemen. Like, uh, you know, it's the old uh, longest yard. Like I'm not, I'm not blocking for him. Like, no, no thoughts on any of this before we move on? Yeah, I mean, he's just a bad teammate. He thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. I mean, now he's doing a diet where he's trying to eliminate waste so he doesn't have to poop anymore. I mean, this guy is just <laughs> completely out there. Uh, I don't know, man. It just what? doesn't seem like football is a big priority for him. What was he calling himself in those videos? Mr. Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Mr. Unlimited. Yeah, that guy is something else. All right, enough Russell Wilson talk. Let's talk. My Green Bay Packers, baby, right back into things here. Still got to win some games. Uh, They are hosting the Vikings here uh, this week. Looks like Green Bay, a three and a half point favorite uh, in this one at BetMGM. There's threes, there's three and a half. So depending on uh, what you are looking for, make sure you shop around total at 48 in this one. So Green Bay, we know, got to win. Got to keep those hopes alive. Minnesota. They can kind of keep an eye on things. You know, Philadelphia wins. Uh, they lock up that number one seed. They know they don't have a chance for that. Uh, but a two seed, a three seed, a chance to knock Aaron Rodgers and company out of the playoffs. Uh, certainly a lot of motivation here for the Vikings. So, uh, no, no, I'm going to lock in a best bet here. I hate to do this. Oh, 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 no. I hate to do this because I want to see this run continue. They have been playing better. Big win on the road in Miami. Was on them last week. I'm flipping the script here. I'm going with Minnesota. I, I just think, if anything, maybe they win, but it's likely a very, very close game. Unless Minnesota pulls the plug, which is certainly possible, but I think the Vikings are going to go out, try to eliminate uh, the Green Bay Packers here. So it would not shock me to see them win, especially if I can get a three and a half. I'm pulling for my boys to win, but I think Minnesota ends up getting the cover here, Noto. So Vikings, best bet, number uh, number five for me here on the show. So what do you got here? Packers, Vikings, everything to play for for Green Bay. 
Now, is this a classic uh, live hedge that I like to pull with my yes, Jaguars? It absolutely okay. is. I don't care if I lose the bet. <laughs> this uh, let's win and then move on to next week. All right. I, I like the Packers quite a bit in this one. I mean, like the Vikings, they're fine. They continue to win games uh, that they probably shouldn't be winning. Just pulled up the old DVOA for the season. Green Bay 11th in DVOA, total DVOA. Uh, Minnesota 25th. Um, they just continue to, I don't know, their record is not indicative of how well they played on the football field. A lot more on at stake for the uh, Packers. So I'm going to lock them in. I uh, hate to go against you, but I'm going to lock in your team. Hey, I love it. Great, great pick. I'm po- I am pulling for you 100%. <laughs> I don't mind sacrificing uh, this pick. So if you're listening out there, you, know, you, you take your pick here. So Although, uh, why can't we get Aaron Jones some touches? What, what's going on there? So he is questionable. I've been keeping an eye on the, on the practice reports. And, and this is, you know, they tend to always do that. Oh, A.J. Dillon's running well. Let, let's get him the ball. But uh, Jones is dealing with, with an injury. So that was probably part of what's going on. So listed questionable. Keep an eye on those practice reports here. But my worry is they can't stop the run. I mean, uh, Dalvin Green Bay, you mentioned the defense. But the run D, uh, one of the worst, if not the worst, uh, in all the football. They did a decent job of it uh, last week. But Tua was on his way to throw for 600 yards uh, in that game. So just still still some questions defensively uh, for me here. So, Chop, Vikings, Packers, what do you got, buddy? Yeah, man. Um, I'm, I, need to, I need to see uh, the status of Christian Watson also. Yep. So also that's, a big, that's a big deal, man. I really like, I really like the Packers when they have a, that full health in that receiving core. I think that's a big deal for them, but – I'm still I'm still with Noto here. I'm actually going to lock in the Packers here as long as I can get it at a field goal or less. I'm going to lock in the Packers because I've seen enough of, of Minnesota now. Everything's all no matter who they play, everything is always so close and down to the last possession, and they just don't pull away from anybody. Now we're going to go into Green Bay, and Green Bay is playing well. It's a must-win game for them, and uh, I, I, Kirk Cousins is a great indoor quarterback, but I, whatever. What are his splits in weather that's 35 degrees or less? Because it's going to be chillier in Green Bay. It's frozen tundra. It's tough. I want to say that right off the top of my head, I don't think he prospers in those kind of conditions. We certainly know he's not a primetime guy, so maybe there is something to those I kind was of really splits. hoping this game was a Sunday <laughs> yeah. night football yeah. or Monday night. Like that, then I'm locking in Green Bay for sure. I just think there's a lot more to like about the Packers here. So I'm going to lock in the Packers. All right. Green Bay locked in best bet and number four. For, Derek, was it a best bet for you or just chop? Yep, best bet for me All as right. well. Number four I have for both of you here. Best bet to, on the Packers. All right, you guys might be maybe switching my mind here. I might I might leave the hedge, but uh, Vikings for now. Rams, Chargers up next. Uh, L.A. Chargers big favorites as we'd expect. Uh, six and a half. That's actually come down from the open of 841 on the total on this one chop so like, like noto mentioned earlier i mean baker mayfield cam Akers, higby these guys came to play uh now face the chargers team uh coming off a big win uh in indianapolis so what we got here chop the rams we know no first round pick chargers are already in the playoffs uh can move up a little bit here but uh, maybe we see some rest out of the chargers is that concerning enough and is that why this line is moving uh, towards the Rams? Uh, I, that's that's not as much of a concern. I, I think if you're going to rest up a lot, you're going to rest up in week 18 with it. So I think uh, to pro- try to improve your position a little bit in the playoffs is worth it at this point. So uh, I don't think that's a big deal for me. Man, I'm looking at these last two games, and I don't see a best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and, and drop this bomb on the Chargers here, my last lock of the night on the Chargers. Like the Rams, I don't. I think it would be crazy to get too head over heels in love with the Rams after that one game. It was a great game, but clearly Denver was in disarray. And who knows if Hackett already knew he was going to get fired and all this other stuff, and that's why Denver completely collapsed on Christmas Day. So I'm not going to buy too much into it. I th- still think the Rams are a pretty bad team. And the Chargers are actually peaking right now with all their weapons back. I think they kind of go out there and steamroll this game and then pull off the gas next week and kind of rest some guys up. So I'm going Chargers here. I I have more concerns about the rest, about the Rams playing a little bit better. I would I would lean the other side. I'm not probably wagering on this game, just, just with all the question marks here. 
uh, it, uh, we are showing 99% of the money in the Rams. And sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't have a lot of information on this. Maybe there's not a lot of bets on this. I'm sure that's going to change as I'm sure all the money is not on the Rams, but I will just take the team with the points. I do think, you know, Mike Williams been banged up Keenan Allen. If they can find any kind of rest for these guys, I agree. It's more likely to come in week 18, but if they get out to a lead, Again, we get a backdoor Betty situation. Uh, it's just too concerning to me. A quick report as we record some quarterback updates. No practice today for Lamar Jackson, who we're about to talk about on Sunday Night Football, and Jalen Hurts. No practice uh, for Philadelphia today. So a couple of QB updates uh, for you there. No, no, Rams, Chargers, Battle of L.A. What do you got? Yeah, one other update. It does look like Lockett's going to play for oh, the Seahawks. Okay. So I was wrong. Uh, at least he went through practice on Wednesday. Uh, you never can really trust Pete Carroll with these kind of things. But, uh, yeah, for this game, man, I do not understand the love for Baker Mayfield. Uh, I talked about it when he made his first start with the Rams. The announcers were just gushing over him, making three-yard passes. And then last week, my timeline on Twitter was filled with Drew Brees comparisons because uh, he wow. put up 50 points against the Broncos. I mean, come on. I don't, I don't get it. I'm all over the charges in this one. I'm not going to lock him in. Um, they, they were one of my best bets last week and they came through for me. So maybe I should go back to the well, but, uh, yeah, they've already clinched the playoff spot. Uh, they hopefully are going to get Bosa back to the playoffs. This team kind of feels like the Bengals from last year. Yeah. I mean, they, they certainly have the talent to, to go on a run, no doubt. And, and if, if people not gotten the, you know, hip on Baker Mayfield, he, he tends to remember when he came in and he was the savior of Cleveland comes off the bench and, had a couple of good games, and then we saw the real Baker Mayfield. So uh, had a game, had a couple of good games, had that comeback, a big win last week. He's still a concern. Even though I lean the Rams, I am concerned with Baker Mayfield. All right, let's go to Sunday Night Football. We mentioned Lamar Jackson. That's something to keep an eye on here uh, for Baltimore. As far as motivation goes, Steelers got to win both of these games, get some help. So uh, it's a very, very uh, outside shot. They also have the, the streak of winning seasons under Mike Tomlin uh, on the line here. Ravens all locked up in the playoff spot, uh, could get up to the three seed uh, if they win out here. So still some motivation here, but it sounds like we likely see Tyler Huntley once again. Latest numbers on this one, Baltimore, two and a half point favorites. That's down from six and a half at open and a 35 on the total. It's one of those, one of those weather totals here, Noto. So Likely an ugly game here. Steelers, uh, all the motivation to try and win here. Can they pull it off on the road in Baltimore? Yeah, I don't have a strong take on this game either way. If it was three, I'd probably just take the points. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a strong take. I'm just going to take the under probably. I still think 35 and a half is, is low, but I, I think both of these defenses are going to have a lot of success. So I would lean towards the under, even though you know I'm supposed to be picking a side here. I'm going to lean to the Steelers. I don't have any bullets left. They wouldn't be a best bet for me anyway, but uh, I, I do think they can go on the road and get this done. So Huntley has been a concern if it's Lamar. I, I think you see that spread uh, start to get back towards that, you know, six, six and a half, seven potentially, but uh, chop just two and a half as we sit right now, likely Tyler Huntley Steelers on the road. What do you got Sunday night football? Oh man. I think, I think I'm taking a lean here. Ah, two and a half is I wish they give me at least a field goal. But I think this the Steelers have uh I think the Steelers have still a decent chance at the playoffs if they yeah, can win I mean, out. They gotta win both and, and get some help. Yeah, they gotta win both, but the help they need isn't that bad. The Jets need to beat Miami in week 18. Okay, that's not maybe not two in that game, and and you know. So they need that to happen. They need the Patriots to lose to Buffalo in week 18. I think that had definitely happened. The Dolphins need to lose out, lose at New England, and then lose that Jets game. Like, it's it's feasible is what I'm saying. I don't think it's – some of these teams are so far out of the out of the playoffs is not going to happen. I, I don't see anything on the board for the Steelers if they win out that isn't likely to happen in my opinion. So they got a shot. I think they're still highly motivated. The Ravens, not so much. But it's not enough points for me to take the Steelers on the road here, so I'm pretty neutral in this thing. I'm a but I give the Steelers credit for still pounding through the season. They don't have a lot of talent there on offense. 
uh, and they're struggling at the quarterback position, but they're still grinding out. And if, if Mike Tomlin can somehow win out and finish above 500 again, that's a big accomplishment in the NFL to keep on continuing winning year after year, even though you've been straddled with bad quarterback play for over half a decade now with Ben Roethlisberger on the last legs of his career and now Mitch Trubisky and a rookie splitting time this year. So he's a good coach. All right, let's go to Monday Night Football. This one should be fun, guys. Buffalo, Cincinnati. Uh, Bills opened up as two-and-a-half-point favorites. That's come down to one-and-a-half. Uh, there's a lot of ones out there uh, as well. 49-and-a-half here uh, on the total. So motivation for Buffalo, simple. They went out. Uh, they lock up the, the one seed first round by Bengals. So there's a lot going on here. They need to win out. Uh, they need Kansas City to lose a game for any shot at the one seed. And also lock up the division this week if they win and Baltimore were to lose. So both teams fully motivated here, Chop. Uh, should be a fun game. Bengals starting to look like the team that went to the Super Bowl, playing well, playing with a lot of confidence. Buffalo, we know they're a juggernaut here. Who comes out on top here? Battle of the heavyweights, Buffalo, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's playing very, very well. And Buffalo is not playing bad, but they just haven't put teams away like, like we thought they would earlier in the year. Uh, with all that being said, I think there's more motivation for Buffalo. Cincinnati's pretty much locked in everything. Like, yeah, out. Like, the odds of them getting all that help to get the number one seed is, like, astronomical compared to, like, the Steelers, you know? Like, KC's not going to lose a game from here on out. They play two powder puffs. But the Bengals, I think, are kind of locked into where they want to go. And then we have that thing where we're in week 17 – and I, th I think, you know, some people may disagree with this, but you see, you have a team. This is like the Dallas Philly thing from last week. You're going to face a team in a few weeks, in about a month, in the playoffs. And these two teams know they're going to play. How much are you going to divulge right now when not that much is on the line? There's more on the line for Buffalo. They need to win out. And this is the biggest game of the year they have left. This is the toughest one, I should say. So I think Buffalo is more willing to put on put it on the line in this game. So I'm going to lean towards Buffalo, whereas Cincinnati knows that there's a good chance they see this team a month from now in the playoffs. And we're not going to let them know all the good stuff we can do to their defense right now. So we'll play a, a pretty vanilla scheme and hope we can win this game. But if we don't, we, we've lost absolutely really no ground because we're locked in. So I'm going to lean Buffalo here. I'm with you 100 uh, percent. In fact, Buffalo, Minnesota was my debate uh, on my last best bet. I'm scrapping Minnesota. I forget them. You guys were strong on the Packers. I'm, I'm going to lock in Buffalo uh, in their place here. I agree completely. It's Buffalo just has more to play for. You know, it would take a lot to happen for Cincinnati to move up uh, to get that number one spot. I think they understand that. They realize that. They have been playing well here, but everything on the line for Buffalo. If you can lock up the bye week, everything has to run through that raucous environment in Buffalo. I just think there's more motivation there. I agree with you completely, Chop. So, replacing minnesota we're pulling the pulling the rug sweep here i'm going buffalo best bet here no no wrap us up buddy bills Bengals should be a fun one monday night football yeah should be a great game and a big couple of weeks for my uh futures bets that i made uh at the start of the season we uh did talk about these in our uh you know preseason show but i got saquon barkley comeback player of the year currently you know co-favorite with gino so i think if the giants make it seahawks don't that one's gonna be looking okay uh, I got Justin Jefferson, Offensive Player of the Year. He's a big favorite there. And then I got uh, Josh Allen, MVP. So uh, I'm hoping if he can get this done and maybe, uh, you know, the Chiefs slip up, you know, one of the next two games, uh, he can, you know, get that done as well. So a uh, big couple weeks for my futures bets. And I'm going to lock in the Bills as my final bet. I just think, like Chop said, I think they have a lot more to play for. And I think this is going to be a statement game a little bit for the Bills. All right, let's give a recap of the best bets. Noto is rolling with Washington, Jacksonville, New England, Green Bay, and Buffalo. Chop has Philadelphia, Atlanta, New England, Green Bay, and the Los Angeles Chargers. I am on Carolina, Washington, Atlanta, New England, and Buffalo. So New England across the board, Atlanta for Chop and I, Washington for Noto and I, Green Bay for Chop and Noto, Buffalo for Noto and myself. A couple of the ones that doubled or tripled up there. So it uh, should be a fun week. A, a lot at stake. You know, sometimes we get to this point of the season and, you know, there's not a lot of teams. 
uh, in play. There weren't many games that, that teams didn't have some level of motivation. So uh, should be fun. Monitor those injury reports. Monitor the, the beat writers as far as rest goes with some of these situations. You know, the Chargers, the Titans, teams like that. So uh, lots to keep an eye on. The more plugged in you're in, the more advantage you give yourself, both betting and in DFS. So, guys, let's wrap it up. We're approaching an hour here. It's been a while since we went an hour. But uh, final thoughts for the people here, Noto. What do you got? Yeah, a little bit of a bad B story for my season-long league. Made it to the Final Four. And uh, for whatever reason, we have a five-point home field advantage, um, which is the first time we've ever had it, and and a buy for the top two seeds. And anyway, I lost by two because of the five-point home home field advantage, whatever. Um, do you guys have that in your leagues? I have, I've never heard of that. I've been in a lot of leagues with a lot of different rules. Never heard of that. I would have protested that rule on draft yep. day, man. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, I figured I would have uh, the top seed, so I was like, okay, I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Pretty arrogant. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, and had Hurts as my quarterbacks, and uh, the Oof. guy I faced picked up Minshew and played him against me. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty brutal. More breaking news to close out the show. Running back Derrick Henry now listed as doubtful to even play. So this spread may balloon even more. Uh, hopefully, if you got on Dallas, uh, this thing may go to, to two touchdowns. So, Chop, final thoughts for the people, buddy. What do you got? Final thoughts would be we're winding down 2022. We're winding down the NFL year. A couple more weeks left than the playoff start. That's the fun stuff. I would say that going into this weekend, guys, please be careful out there. New Year's Eve, don't drink and drive. Try to stay off the roads, period, because there's a lot of drinkers and drivers out there, weird people, late night, things happen. So please be careful out there because we want everybody to come back and tune in next next week. Agree completely. So happy holidays to everybody out there. Have a happy, safe uh, New Year's. We will be back uh, next week covering the Week 18 slate. Thank you so much for listening. Again, promo code GRINDERS, <clears throat> excuse me, over at BetMGM for that risk-free bet up to $1,000. For Noto, for Chop, I am Bear. We are the DFS OGs. Thank you so much for listening. Happy New Year, everybody, and we'll catch you next week. Kick off the new pro football season with the king of sportsbooks. Sign up at BetMGM using bonus code GRINDERS and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, Tennessee, Virginia, Washington, D.C., West Virginia, Wyoming, or Ontario only. Must be 21 years or older to wager. 19 or older in Ontario, new customer offer only. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, D.C., Kansas, Louisiana, Nevada, Wyoming, or Virginia. 1-800-270-7117. For confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana, Maryland, New Jersey, or West Virginia, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa, 1-800-981-0023 in Puerto Rico. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Call or text the Tennessee Red Line at 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-888-777-9696 in Mississippi and Ontario. If you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Ohio, and Utah and other states where prohibited. Promotional offers not available in Nevada and New York.